This right here is the Barra 400E full auto electric BB gun. This basically uses airsoft technology, except we're not shooting airsoft BBs. We're shooting actual 177 caliber metal BBs out of this thing. So it uses that airsoft technology, but with real uh, BB gun ammunition, which is pretty cool. The big question is, is this possibly the best full auto BB gun on the market right now? Let's do some testing and find out. So I have a whole bunch of different targets that we're gonna use to test this thing out. One of them being a coconut, we have a watermelon. We have some Diet Dr. Thunder because that is just the best rip-off cola brand name out there. And then we have some Mountain Lightning. We got a two liter bottle of Mountain Lightning. And then I have some targets. So we're gonna test things like groups, accuracy, and all that too. First test I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test out the full auto accuracy on this guy. There are no holes in the upper target right now. So I'm gonna see what my grouping is. I'm gonna hold it as steady as possible. Fifteen yards away, and that's not too bad. It's about a half a magazine, so I did try to get it sighted in a little bit. But yeah, we're talking about probably a two-inch group right there. So let's do some more tests. All right, so now we're at twenty yards. We're gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna go for the head of that silhouette target now, and let's see how that full auto works. So this was at 20 yards and you can see majority of them were hitting pretty much dead center right here You had a couple flyers on the side But I was doing a little bit of sweeping trying to make sure I saw that pattern once I saw that BB pattern and flow I kind of honed it down to one spot. So but right here you're sitting at about three and a half inches So everything except for this little guy right here. I wouldn't worry about that little guy So not bad as far as full auto consistency at 20 yards and 15 yards it's, it's not too bad. Now things are gonna start getting a little messier. I've got that two liter bottle of Mountain Lightning. That's a pretty cool name too. Two liter bottle of Mountain Lightning. Let's see what kind of damage this does against it. I'm gonna do a couple first semi-auto, then I'm gonna go full auto on it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Dude, that thing is spraying. All right, full auto. That thing got messy. <laughs> you see it do a little twist? That was awesome. All right, you can see a couple BBs rolling around in there, but it looks like a couple did bust through also, but then again, it did spin around. So it's hard to tell if it actually went through with liquid in there or just spun around and I hit it from the inside. Almost everything does look like an entrance hole. <laughs> so we'll see, but yeah, definitely destroyed this thing. That was fun. All right, so on the table, we have some Dr. Thunder, just a few cans of it. This test doesn't do anything except just make a mess, but it's always fun to pop some cans, so let's just go straight to full auto with it. Dude, these things explode freaking hard, Now what we have is a watermelon. I just want to see how much damage this does to a watermelon. Practical test, you can kind of see what kind of damage it does in general. That's something similar to something with skin, whether it's maybe good for pest control. Let's just see how powerful this thing is now. Definitely went in all of them. Here's your group right about here. Nothing went out the other side. So it looks like we're just going right into the watermelons, catching it somewhere in the middle. So this is where the entrance was for the BBs and here's the exit. So it was actually going through the entire watermelon and getting stuck on the uh, skin or rind, whatever you call it, on the other side. So it made it clear through the watermelon. You can see these streaks where the BBs were passing right through.
So that's pretty dang impressive. Let's hit the coconut. Also, I believe they hold 50 rounds in the magazine. These magazines are only gonna be about like $25 too. So a lot cheaper than some of the CO2 counterparts that we've talked about in the past. Let's talk about a negative of the electric. And to be honest, the only negative I can think of is the fact that the fire rate is quite a bit slower than a CO2 powered BB gun. Um, CO2 is as fast as that, as fast as that gearbox works. So with CO2, it's fast. It has a very fast cycle rate. Electric's gonna be a little slower. Um, you're winding up springs and pistons and releasing it. So it takes a little longer for your fire rate. That being said, it's not a slow fire rate, but not nearly as fast as CO2. The big thing is being an electric gun versus CO2, you gain that consistency that we talked about. That consistent 400-ish FPS, not to mention accuracy too. So CO2, the problem with CO2 is it becomes wildly inaccurate the colder it gets. Now CO2 is a cold gas. It gets cold, right? That's why when you have an old CO2 paintball gun instead of the HPA type paintball guns, you're going to get like a lot of issues happening. Uh, bolts, frozen bolts, stuff like that. Same thing happens on a BB gun. If you put enough CO2 through it, things start freezing up a bit. And then you also get inconsistent velocities and accuracy with it as well. Electric, you don't have to worry about that at all. It's electric, it's consistent, it just works. So you can charge up multiple batteries, load up multiple magazines, which are really affordable. What I'm gonna do different for this coconut though, I'm gonna bring the camera closer to it and um, we're not gonna see me shooting the gun. We're just gonna take a closer look at the coconut just cause that's more interesting than just watching the gun shoot. Here's the coconut, and you can see we started busting through the shell. And the question is, how much damage did it really do? It pressed in this pretty big hole right here, but it seemed to stop just past the surface. We started getting some coconut skin, or we did start getting some coconut meat right here, but I don't, looks like nothing actually busted through. So this is actually still good to drink. So I'm totally gonna drink this coconut today. Let's talk about some of the features. So right here, this is your stock. It's an adjustable stock. And then on the back side of the stock is a little door and this is where your LiPo battery is stored. So the LiPo battery uses a Dean's connector which is a very popular connector found on RC cars and airsoft guns and all that. You do have an ambidextrous safety selector. So what that means is on the left and right side of the receiver, you can actually toggle the safety, semi-auto and full auto. You also have an ambidextrous magazine release. So right side, you have your magazine release. And the left side, you also have a magazine release. So you can release the mags. So you can release the mags again from both, both hands. Bolt release isn't really used. It, it, the bolt does not hold open or cycle on this. However, I think this does charge your first round into the chamber um, once you load a fresh mag in there. So the charging handle is functional, but you can see that bolt doesn't really ride back far enough to realistic reason. So right here between the receiver, the handguard, and then your upper receiver as well, it's all metal. On the front right here, you have a faux suppressor. You can unscrew it, but you can see the barrel actually goes right through the suppressor and ends right on the tip over here. So if you take it off, you're gonna have an exposed inner barrel, which is just gonna be ugly and non really functional. However, the entire BB gun is made of metal and that's a great feeling BB gun. The other ones I have, plastic receivers and all that stuff. This thing's got some weight to it. It's got heft and it has a very realistic feel. Now, as far as the pistol grip right here, you cannot replace the pistol grip. This has the motor built into it. So this pistol grip is critical for this receiver and the whole mechanism and the whole mechanism. So this is not a replaceable pistol grip, but that's just the design. That's just the way it's designed. Um, stock also, you can't really replace it because this is meant to house that battery. So this is a Barra specific stock. You do have an actual Picatinny rail running along the top all the way through to the front or the tip of the handguard. And the sights are cool because they're dual sights. So you have, you have your raised up sights right here. 
when you flip them down, you actually have some fiber optics that you can still look through, just a lower profile sight. If you don't want to flip them up, you get like a three dot pistol style looking sight with this as well. So the Barra 400 has proven to be pretty powerful. I can actually see this being used for something like a pest control if you want, otherwise a great training tool, practice for the kids or practice for backyard fun, something like that. Even though it does have a slower fire rate, it seems to be consistent and fun and still pretty awesome. And it does some damage to that watermelon, did some damage to those soda cans and even the coconut shell. So I think it could be used for some kind of pest control, um, something like that, just to scare those raccoons away. Otherwise, pull up the 22. Anyways, thank you all so much. Hope you all enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys later.